Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and we are reading Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Waugh. It's a uh, uh, read-along buddy read that uh, I'm doing with uh, Steve Donahue and a few other people who have been uh, reading along and making videos as well. I'll try to make sure to leave links to uh, all the videos uh, that I know about. But uh, we're on the third week and the third quarter of the book. We are still following along with uh, Charles and uh, his time at Brideshead and the March Main uh, family. Uh, Sebastian and his uh, sisters and all the all the family members there and uh, book three uh, sort of in the middle of uh, this this quarter uh, we come to book three in Brideshead Revisited and it's called A Twitch Upon a Thread and I would like to start by reading uh, just the opening uh, passage it's beautiful and it seems like the it seems like the first time that Waugh is giving um, a clear statement, a thesis of what the whole book is about, uh, and it's uh, be beautiful. And I'll just read it. Um, My theme is memory, that winged host that soared about me one gray morning of war time. These memories, which are my life, for we possess nothing, certainly, except the past, were always with me. Like the pigeons of St. Mark's, they were everywhere, under my feet, singly, in pairs, in honey-voiced congregations, nodding, strutting, winking, rolling their tender feathers of their necks, perching sometimes, if I stood still on my shoulder, until suddenly the noon gun boomed, and in a moment, with a flutter and sweep of wings, the pavement was bare, and the whole sky above dark with a tumult of fowl. Thus it was that morning of wartime. And so we have this clear statement that the, the story that we're reading, the, this experience of Charles um, remembering his life um, almost supersedes the little incidents and events and the people. It's, it's the act of um, going over the life that you've lived and uh, if, if it's these fragmented, disconnected, trivial events with people that are going in and out of your lives without much consequence, that says a lot about uh, the life that you've lived as a whole. If you have meaningful, long, meaningful experiences uh, and relationships that are building and making you a better person, as you go along, that says a lot about the life that you've lived. And I've been having trouble uh, with th this book, the, the, the style that, the style or manner or tone that Waugh uh, is using throughout um, is not really working with me. I still find it very hard to follow. It's something that uh, I mentioned in the earlier videos, especially the, f the opening uh, portion of this book, where Waugh doesn't seem to be very interested in um, introducing um, characters or events, but also not putting them in a context that is easy for me to understand. Um, I've heard two really great arguments uh, for this. One, the uh, readership of the time, and uh, especially English readers, uh, would very much already understand um, uh, uh, war wartime uh, at, at, at the uh, m a 
events in, in this book and um, uh, the aristocracy, this uh, ancient um, uh, wealth and nobility running through England, uh, the tension between um, Catholicism and um, uh, being a Protestant in England, all, all, all of those kinds of things didn't really need to be explained to the readers of the time. And I don't think Waugh either is not doing a very good job or really didn't care about filling in a few key um, gaps that would have allowed um, the reader of the future um, to, to be able to understand without too much work. Um, the other great argument, Sean D. Standfast uh, made a great video just saying that the, the book is about memories, which um, that, that passage that I just read um, demonstrates. And uh, Charles, as a character, if, if, if we are experiencing um, his uh, act, acts of recollection, we wouldn't... Um, we wouldn't be hearing from Charles's memories um, all of those introductions and little connections that um, you might expect from someone telling you a story, but instead uh, it's all the things that Charles are, already knows. Um, I'm getting to the point where there, there are um, too many moments adding up of me not understanding um, that uh, I'm giving Wall less and less credit. It's, it's less and less enjoyable. Um, the main thing is the beautiful language. Um, I don't know if that beautiful language is counterbalancing um, one of the main issues that I have, which is that it's a confusing book to read. Um, but um, the characters aren't necessarily, the characters aren't, likable. Um, Charles or um, uh, Anthony Blanche or Sebastian. Um, the most interesting character, which almost makes a cameo appearance, is just uh, Charles's father early on in the book, and I think he makes another appearance a little bit later on. Um, in the third part, um, we're sort of going in another direction altogether. Um, we start following um, Julia's um, tumultuous uh, lead up and engagement to this man named Rex, who is a strange uh, figure. We have a lot of conversations about um, Catholicism and the, and, and um, being a, being a Protestant and how that um, is important and, and affects their um, standing in society. I, I going into the um, book, um, didn't really understand how um, uh, crucial or how how tense um, um, the, these two factions of the same religion uh, were against each other. Um, in a lot of ways I can say I'm enjoying the read-along uh, more than I'm enjoying the, the, the book. Uh, listening to Steve and Sean do stand fast explain parts that I'm not quite understanding um, and explaining parts that I do understand but um, in, in a way that's even more enjoyable than the novel. Um, there's humorous parts with Rex. He's a really strange character, interesting. Um, it feels like he kind of came up later in the book and he's still a compelling character. Um, and that that's uh, um, a whole thing. <laughs> that's a whole thing. But uh, we, th we then go back to Charles who um, uh, has become this painter and a fairly established painter. He's doing these architectural paintings. 
um, as uh, as the war is um, financially affecting um, England at the time, uh, his uh, profession actually gets this little bump because uh, families that have had what um, wealth and manors and mansions uh, for centuries or generations are now in positions where they're losing everything and so they're hiring house they're hiring a house painter um, to get one last uh, rendering of their greatness uh, before they have to leave their home and uh, Charles is described uh, almost as like this grim reaper or a sign on an omen whenever he would like show up somewhere it was a sign of um, uh, uh, things falling apart, uh, doom. It was a sign of doom. Um, he ends up going off to Latin America. Uh, he's on a boat. We get this conversation with him and Julia. They're, they're both married, but now they're uh, on this boat together. The boat is uh, rocking back and forth. They're getting banged by the waves. And you have that feeling of... Um, a bottle rolling back and forth on the deck and they're having this conversation about their present moment and uh, where they are and then also we're learning Julia's um, uh, now giving um, talk, Julia's talking about her past um, and uh, her connection with Charles and it follows it, it has the same feeling of the, bo the boat rocking back and forth the way that we'll go from the past to the present. Um, maybe upon a re I'm sure upon a reread, a lot of this would clear up. Um, but still, it felt jarring um, and confusing. And I feel like we're going in so many different directions. Uh, we spent a lot of time with Sebastian, but now he's just like in Morocco. I think it was Morocco, just like a pitiful drunken uh, pool of a man. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how everything's going to start raining in for the last quarter of the book. Um, and I kind of think about um, one of the, the fractured feeling uh, of the novel, which. Um, when I when I think about like the, like a wartime poem, um, the famous wartime poem, The Wasteland, uh, and it's one of its most notable features was this fractured uh, feeling. I don't I don't know if there's any connection with just the style, that kind of style of writing, with that time period. They're they're relatively close, a few decades apart. Uh, the other thing that I was thinking about is. Um, uh, that focus on memory. Um, some of the most notable uh, novels of the century had this uh, feature. I, I think about remembrance of things past. Just this overwhelming rush of memories sweeping over uh, the narrator. Uh, and another book that came to mind was just The Catch from the Rye, which um, I feel like has some similarities um, with just things happening in the present moment and then recollections um, that bring meaning back to the present moment uh, that are happening in Bride's Head. Um, and an another book that, I, I know I'm just kind of digressing, but uh, another book that I, I feel like has so many similarities with Brideshead, Brideshead Revisited, is a sentimental education. Um, the kind of large cast, this collection of fairly unlikable, uh, fairly well-to-do characters, um, kind of wasting time away, going, kind of doing things, but not putting too much effort into it, uh, worrying about social status, um, chasing, 
chasing around love, we're chasing around vices, um, and 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 other other things. I, <laughs> um, so th th there's a handful of books that I, I kind of think about um, as I've been reading this, and in some ways getting my bearings. I'm mostly at this point wondering how, how it's all gonna come together. Um, the, the, the subtitle of the, this book is, is like the like the memories and vulgarities of Charles um, and it seems like a lot of the book um, Charles is just swallowed up into the lives of other people um, even even a, as a painter uh, we get Anthony Blanche well, just talking about, I, I had the feeling there was this conversation where it's like, well, it's still not really your artwork. Like, you're, you're still posturing. Um, a lot of the book feels like posturing. Um, I know I've been talking for 16 minutes, but I, I feel like from the beginning until now, I still didn't have very much to say. Um, mostly, I'm going to be interested in uh, watching... Uh, Steve's thoughts, uh, Sean D. Standfast's, uh, anyone else that's making make videos, uh, comments, things like that. So leave a comment if, if you would like. Um, and uh, thank you for watching.